Hey everybody, welcome to another very special episode of Gems in the Junkyard. And in this episode, we're showing off some really rare, unusual, and super cool trucks and SUVs. And we're starting with this. This is a 1984 Jeep truck. Now people forget that back in the day, Jeep was one of the leading sellers of full-size trucks. And this is a great example of that. Now this was known as the SJ platform. These were shared with the Wagoneer, the Grand Wagoneer platform. And the older version of this truck was called the Gladiator. So of course, now the Gladiator is based on the Wrangler, but back in the day, they were a full-sized body-on-frame truck. Now this one, Brendan, come down here. This is something really unusual. These were available in a number of different configurations, starting with the letter J, but this one is a J20. And what that means is that we have eight lug axles. So this is a really heavy duty setup. Eight lug front and rear, solid axle in the front. Now this was under the AMC years. Of course, AMC produced a J20 from 1970 through I think 1987. This was an, an 84. Now the hood is jammed closed, but under the hood you would have found either an AMC 360 V8 or even like a 401. So these were really, really beefy rigs. Heavy duty frame on these being a 20. This is a desirable truck and really sad to see in the junkyard. So and right here we have the 2001 Kia Sportage. Now I know to most of you, this just looks like some small little crummy economy SUV, but in reality, these were body on frame SUVs that had a real four x four system built into them. And not only that, but you could get these with a manual transmission and a convertible top. So if you couldn't afford the Wrangler back in the early 2000s, this might be your ticket. So back in the day, Kia was really serious about their off-roading. They gave this little guy a solid rear axle and a low gear transfer case. They were so serious, in fact, that they had this thing compete in the Baja 1000. This little Kia Sportage in the Baja 1000. Can you imagine? So do you remember that Jeep truck we just took a look at? Well, this was its direct competitor, the square body Chevy. And this one is pretty special. Really sad to see this in the junkyard. So this is a 77 K20. And back in the day, they had two variants of these trucks. The C20 meant that it was a two wheel drive and the K meant that it was four wheel drive. And the 20 denotes that this was actually like a three quarter ton truck or the equivalent. Now that means that we had eight lug axles and they're really desirable, which is why the front axle is missing. But you'll probably still see it retains its original three quarter ton rear axle, which is really cool. Now this truck is not only a K20, which makes it desirable, but it's a K20 Scottsdale. We've got the original badging right there. Scottsdale was a higher end version of this truck. It's really sad to see these in the yard. Now a lot of these were used as like plow trucks. They had hard, heavy duty life cycles and they ended up rusting out pretty badly, which you can see certainly this truck has had some rust issues. And another common issue, do you see this bend in the hood? Well, oftentimes, people would forget to lubricate the hood hinges or not replace them. And that makes it really hard to close the hood on these trucks. And if you pull down on the front of them too hard for too long, you'll actually bend the hood. So I don't think this truck was ever crashed. I think it was just uh, kind of misused. So this right here is the first gen Chevy Colorado. This is a 2012. And what's interesting about these is these didn't come with a four cylinder engine, not a six cylinder engine, not an eight, but Underneath all this garbage here is a five cylinder engine. Of all the engine choices they had, they chose to put a five cylinder. And what's also interesting is the Hummer H3 was based on the same platform as this and came with that same five cylinder engine, which you could get a Hummer H3 or a Chevy Colorado with a five cylinder engine and a manual transmission, but man, they just don't build them like they used to. Now for one of my favorites, the Jeep Cherokee, but we have two super unusual Jeep Cherokees in the junkyard today. Now this is the XJ, is what it's known as internally, the first generation of the really boxy Cherokee, built from like 1984 through 2001. But this one, come over here, Brendan, is pretty unusual. You see the wood paneling on this one? This is what they call the Jeep Cherokee Briarwood. And if you want to scoot past here, I'll open the door and show you what makes this special. Not only did you have the wood paneling, it's just an applique, but these had pretty much every option. Um, so you had full leather seats, these big with lounger, you had those uh, really special bucket front seats, power windows, you had like wood trim all throughout the inside. These things are really cool and sad to see in the junkyard. You don't see a lot of the Briarwoods anymore, but behind you is actually a car even more unusual in some ways. This is another Jeep Cherokee, this time in 1994, but this is a two-door. So people forget that you can get these, not only the four, but the two-door. And if we open this up, I'm gonna hand me the camera. This one's missing, but I think we'll be able to show you what makes this guy special. 
a third pedal. So this was kind of the holy grail. This is a mid 90s, four liter equipped Jeep Cherokee two door, which is arguably the most desirable spec with a manual transmission. This is a really special little rig. People love these. They built millions of them. They go forever. Sad to see them in the junkyard. So this one here is a 1999 GMC Yukon. And what I like here is it's got the barn doors in the back. Now this is part of that GMT 400 platform that they built under Chevy. They also built under Cadillac. And this one is the Yukon, so it kind of slotted right in the middle. But this is the Denali. So this was the highest trim you could get in the GMC back in the day. Now here we have a car that no one ever thinks about. The first gen Mercedes ML, not much love, but did you know Mercedes actually intended these to be pretty good off-road and they're a body on frame construction with an actual low range transfer case. Pretty cool. This also had standard traction control, what they called the four ETS system, which distributed torque where it needed to go. Now these Mercedes, all right, this one's pretty rough. We're powered by a number of engines. This is the base engine, which is a 3.2 liter V6. But what I love about this one is actually not the engine, not this grill, which keeps falling off, but this down here, this push bar. A quick reminder about what Mercedes intended this vehicle to do. Now, what we have here is a first gen Toyota RAV4. And what I have always loved about these is you could get them in these cool seat color or seat patterns. And you could get them with a manual transmission and all wheel drive. Not only that, but it's super rare and hard to find, but you could find these in a two door. You could also find these as a convertible. So you could get them in a convertible with 120 horsepower, all wheel drive and a manual transmission. Doesn't get much cooler than that for late nineties. This is one of my favorite vehicles that I've never owned. This is an Isuzu Trooper and this is a second gen Isuzu Trooper. Now, you saw a lot of these here in the US. They were pretty popular, but less popular is the Acura SLX, another name that it sold under here in the US. But if you were to buy it anywhere else in the world, there were so many different names that this was made under. And called, you could get it under the Chevy Trooper, the Holden Jackaroo, the Holden Monterey, the Honda Horizon, so many different names, so many different companies badge this vehicle because it was just a good, reliable off-road vehicle. Now, another interesting thing is these rear doors. So most SUVs came with just your regular swing open rear door, but not a Suzu. They had to do it just a little bit different and give you this tiny little door in addition to the big one that opened up. This one's been pretty well gutted, but they were surprisingly well equipped back in the day with super comfortable seats and great off-road. What we have here is a 2004 Volvo XC90. And what I think is really interesting about these is you had so many different engine options. So this one has the 2.5 liter turbo six cylinder, but you could get these with a Yamaha sourced and built V8 engine. So the Yamaha would build the V8 engine in pieces and ship it to Volvo where they would install it into this car. So the same makers that made the Taurus SHO engine made one for Volvo. And not only that, but these interiors on these first gen Volvos, XC90s are super squishy and super comfortable. We're gonna finish up on two of my favorite cars of all time, the Volkswagen Touareg. Unfortunately, you see a lot of these in the junkyard because they were pretty unreliable and expensive to fix. However, this was Volkswagen's Moonshot. These are really special vehicles. So they look like normal mom cars, but they're equipped with a low range transfer case, a standard center diff lock, and you can get them with an optional rear diff lock and an air suspension that would lift to 11 inches. Now, a couple of things, which you may notice on both of these, headlights, really expensive in Touareg. So typically the first thing that are stolen are the headlights. Now you could get these in a V6, a V8, or even that V10 TDI in the first gen, but both of these are the V6. I say V6 in air quotes because check this out, Brendan, get close here. That's actually the VR6 engine in this massive 4,500 pound SUV or so. These things are really heavy, but what I love about them is they're kind of like the ultimate off-road sleeper. If you want to circle around here, Brendan, you can see just how refined and well-made these were on the inside. They were so comfortable. You can get them with navigation. You can get them with a heated steering wheel, heated seats, rear automatic climate control, rear heated seats, so many options. Now, both of these have these 17-inch wheels, which are really desirable for off-roading because that means you can put a big tire on them. I think these were called like the Canyon wheels, if I remember correctly. A lot of people look for these for their V8, they won't fit on the V10, by the way, because it's a little too big. And then along the back here, a couple of cool things. These rear hatches could actually be popped separately. 
glass to the tailgate. You need electricity to pop them though. And then the hood struts or the trunk struts are actually built in to the top of the roof, which makes them really expensive to replace. But overall, one of my favorite vehicles of all time. Really sad to see so many of them here for a reason. Also, one more thing, <laughs> I just love this fact. The batteries on these live underneath the seats and they're pretty, 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 pretty hard to actually get to. So something that a lot of people don't know about Touaregs. And then I, I say it different every time. Americans say Touaregs, officially it's Touareg, it's a tribe in Africa. Let me know how you pronounce it. Um, there's just so many weird things about these that could go on and on and on for days. But guys, thank you for joining this episode of Gems in the Junkyard. For Brendan and I, we're really appreciative that you came up for these. If you like them, leave us a comment. If not, leave us a comment, and we'll see you in the next one. Yes.